Hello, we have another question. And the question is, how do I hear my guides? Now, I want to preface this as not everybody has the same, shall I say, connection with guides, and here's why. Um, we have a choice when we come to this world, whether we want counsel or not counsel. And what I mean by that is every human has a, shall I say, escort <laughs> coming and going. Every human has an escort, not always going, but frequently going. But everybody has an escort coming. Because uh, just after the moment of choosing, you just you choose and then therefore you are into this it's a very quick it's hard to explain i remember it happening and it is um it's literally a choice you have a selection and you say yes that's the one but then you have a guide as you make that choice now um in our agreements we can agree to have guidance or not most of us choose yes to have guidance and you may have some memories of listening or talking to your guidance when you were a child. That's not uncommon. And if you don't have memories, you have vague dreams, sort of dreams where you spoke to guidance. Now, guidance can be in all levels. Frequently, guidance is a genetic relative, if not a soul group relative. Um, often, guidance can be in the form of an old buddy. Um, my early guidance was from my quote unquote, running buddy, my um, comrade in arms named Mike, who was pretty amazing and very vociferous and did an excellent job of maintaining my life. I only died twice <laughs> and I did very risky things. So Mike did a wonderful job. But the question today is how do we hear our guidance, not about the quality of the guidance. Um, often, if we are complaining that we can't hear our guidance, it's because we weren't listening. And there are many reasons for us not list, to not listen. First of is that the guidance that we heard and that we felt and that we knew as a very small child, generally starting around two when they start exercising, they meaning the people who raise us, start exercising their um, guidance over us, their wills, their demands over us. It usually directly um, uh, goes against the the demands, our guidance versus their demands. So we learn to subjugate that that listening for listening to the big people around us. That's a very healthy and normal thing to learn. Uh, if we were raised by a highly critical and very negative parent, our guidance is so subjugated that it gets buried so deep that we can't hear anything. And here's what you'll notice. If you apologize a lot, if you feel that, you know, you shouldn't make any demands, if you feel like your information isn't valuable, if you feel uh, pressured and, and um, very frightened, if you get caught doing something wrong, then chances are that your guidance is pretty deeply buried. Um, it's possible to bring it back. It's not impossible. And what is the first step? Ignoring the words of the people outside and listening to the whispering of the feelings on the inside. And I'm going to say that again. Ignore the words of the people outside of you and listen to the whisperings on the people inside of you. Now, if the whisperings are coming from your brain, they're your training. If the whisperings are coming from your heart or your guts, they're your guides. And how do I know this? Do an example. Do a test. Do something sometime and check to see if the information that you get comes from here or your heart or your intestines. And it, and it has to be something you don't care a great deal about. It, it can't be something that you're really, really, really sure that you must know the answer to. It has to be something like, do I feel like taking a walk? <laughs> or would this taste good? <laughs> and notice when it comes from your brain or your guts. And generally, it comes from your heart or your guts. It has to be something that you don't care about. Just so you learn how to listen to that voice. The voice of shame comes from our brain. The voice of encouragement comes from our heart or our guts. Okay? Although often fear comes from our guts. 
hurts. And, and there's a biological reason for that. The feeling of gripping in our guts is fear. Okay, so they're suggesting that we do a very quick meditation so that you can listen to your guts and that we can turn off the mind and move into the body to hear our truth. And so we'd like you to slow down your mind very slowly by counting backwards from 10. And as you count backwards, I want you to make your breath in rhythm with a count, breathe in, and then have a count and breathe out. So we're going to start 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, breathe in, and one, exhale very gently. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is find out where we are, where your little tiny mini me is living. Frequently, it's right here. If not right here, somewhere inside your body or occasionally in your throat or every once in a while in your heart already, which is nice. And if it's already living there, then you should be able to hear your God's guides anyway. All right, so notice where you are. That's nice. And now create a slide or um, some way, an elevator, something where you can move yourself down to the quiet place in your body, where there's an energetic still room, the vortex of your still room. So either slide down with the intention to your quiet place or create an elevator, push the button, get on and move to the quiet place. And as you feel your little energetic self move into that quiet place, you may notice a muffling of sound a sunset like colors or sparkling of sun. You may feel um, sparkling against water or there may be sunset colors reflected in water. Water is a big theme in this quiet area. So move to that quiet area and create a small chair for, or a big chair if you want. Just a quiet, comfortable place to sit and feel where you are. This is your place of knowingness. Now gently, I'd like you to say, hello, I choose to hear my guidance now. Just very, very gently. You may hear an echo or you may hear guidance from this area right away. If it's far away, just again say, ah, I choose to hear my guidance now. I promise to listen and honor. I choose to hear my guidance now. I promise to listen and honor. And now wait. And you don't try. Just let your mind drift. Let your mind enjoy the view and the quiet peace of this place. In fact, go to this place as often as you want and ask for knowingness and guidance. You will receive it here. First and foremost, this is the source. This is the place where you become one with the ability to feel and know all that is. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to create a rule. Then when you feel the twinges or you get an inspiration of knowledge, you will honor it instead of going, oh, that can't be right. Oh, that's not true. I must listen to the words of this man who's promising things to me rather than the knowingness of myself. It's very familiar, isn't it? So feel the promise that you are making to yourself. I will honor my intuition above the words of other people. 
from now on, I promise, I solemnly promise to honor my own guidance over the guidance of others. If you follow that and you heed it, slowly, 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 your guides will begin to speak louder and louder so you can hear them in day-to-day -day life. Spend time in this quiet place, relaxing and feeling stillness. It's an instant gateway to meditation, just that simple, simple thing. Eventually, you can teach yourself to just three, two, one, stillness. Because it's just training the mind to be quiet and to receive. It's as simple as that. If you don't turn on the radio, how are you going to hear the music? It's as simple as that. Thank you so much, and I hope you have great success. Bye-bye.